Imagine for a minute there was just one investment that you needed to hold on to for your entire life to make sure that retirement is a dream that you're going to achieve. Now, overall, I am shooting for seven more years for retirement, looking at the age of 50, need a solid growth plan, need a solid investment strategy, which is what we're going to be covering today, guys. Now, there has been a really big push and a really big um, logical reason why the Vanguard S&P 500 or the VOO is what I invest in. I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you an M1 finance exactly how we're investing in it and also also break down the VOO as I see it today as the one investment that you really need. Now, looking at some of the greatest investors, such as um, Warren Buffett, he has said everyone should hold on to the Vanguard S&P 500 or the VOO. They should be investing into an S&P 500 fund. There are a few of them out there that do kind of track it, but the VOO is probably one of most well-known and it is one that I utilize personally. But let's go ahead and break it down and I will show you exactly why I do use this investment strategy. All right, guys, so here is the current investment portfolio. Now, this does not include the balances that we carry in 401ks. This is just an investment account that I do have from M1 Finance. The links are down below if you do want to invest in M1 Finance. Now, looking at the S&P 500, you can see starting value on September 27, 2021. So this has been running going on almost two years that we've been investing into the S&P 500. Over this, we put $50,000 in here. That is the reason why in the next seven years, if I can put twenty five dollars to $30,000 away per year into an investment account to be able to actually stockpile on the funds within that investment account so we can retire at 50 years old. Now you'll notice guys right here the gain is over $6,000 which is pretty good so averaging about $3,000 plus per year. Now we do know that 2022 was an incredibly difficult year when it came to finances when it came to investments and then you can see the return that we're yielding right now is around 35%. Now the reason for this is I do dollar cost average which again um, we can talk about a little bit but overall what I do is average Every two weeks, bi-weekly, I do get paid. So we get 26 pay periods per year, which means I do put X amount of dollars into the S&P 500 ETF every single two weeks, dollar cost averaging in. I don't save it up till I accumulate, you know, five, 10, $15,000, dump it all in there at once. I buy consistently every two weeks and I have for almost two years at this basis. Now, I think even at this point is if I keep on my two week period that we're doing this investment strategy for the next seven years, not only the compound pounding in the snowball effect that we see, the growth effect that we're going to see with the S&P 500. Again, we're going to break it down a little bit, guys. And I kind of want to show you, I went through a couple different investments um, within this portfolio. That's the reason why you can see 35% right here. But overall, when you get down here, guys, the VOO or the S&P 500 is roughly 44.82%, almost a 45% return, as you can see right there behind the camera for the VOO or the Vanguard S&P 500. Now, this is due to the dollar cost averaging that we put in here. So overall, I've made 6,500. Some of the other things that I did have investments in this specific portfolio, I have sold, literally put everything into the VOO so we can continue to grow this. And it is astronomical, guys. When you start breaking this down, when we actually get into the Vanguard S&P, again, it kind of shows me the value over time when we did some investments, things of that nature, took a little bit of money out um, to kind of move around a little bit. But you can see, guys, the market change. There's a bunch of information, of course, through M1 that really shows you um, Warren Buffett's number one ETF, which of course is the S&P 500. There's a lot of articles depending on what you're looking at within the M1 Finance app. And it is really cool to break it down, guys. But I want to hop over onto Vanguard site and break this down even further. VOO details. That is right, guys. Again, through M1, this breaks it down very well. You can see it is roughly $415. This is the aftermarket. It is Saturday. The markets are closed as we know it. But when you look and you kind of break it down on a day basis, you can see there's been a little bit of gain. This is where it gets interesting and this is where it gets kind of crazy guys because then you go into a week you can see a 0.6 so okay we made two dollars and 80 cents on gain with the vanguard in a week when you break it into a month now you're looking at a three percent gain three percent overall when you look in relationship to investing when you look at savings accounts things of that nature three percent gain is pretty good when you get into the three months now you're almost at ten percent that is right guys 9.77 over the last three months so a pretty good factor when you look at almost a 10% return. I don't even know CDs or anywhere really that's paying north of 5% on a guaranteed return. M1 Finance does have a high yield savings account, which does yield 5%. Putting into the S&P 500, you can see we've doubled that 5% at almost 10. When you start going six months out, that is right, only six months out. You can see it also did yield dividend payments right on both of those dates. There were dividends and this does pay dividends every quarter, but now you're at 14.26%, which is incredible, incredible return, guys. That 
that is almost 15% in the last six months. Now we are in July, we are in the seven month right now, which means that we are past, you know, what we've seen in 2022. Even the year to date returns when we add on, of course, January, we're at 18.28%. That is right, guys, an 18% return this year. If you would have put money into the VOO or the S&P 500, you would have had an 18% return. Now, a lot of articles that I follow do talk about the S&P 500, talk about the VOO, as well as a lot of financial news. Now, I am not a financial advisor. This is just the way that I do the portfolio, guys, and the reason why we put it into the Vanguard S&P 500. Now, overall, again, you look at the year today, we're at 18%. When you go back 12 months, we are at 14. 2022, again, was very, very difficult when it comes to the stock market. A lot of people pulled all of their money out because of what we've seen happening in 2022. But then you go back to 21, we're at 4.89. So again, this is COVID. If you look right here, July of 21, you can see this is kind of in the middle of the pandemic, which I believe started in what, like March of 21, um, or it might even have been 2020 now that I think about it. But go back five years, boom, 61%. That is right, guys, in the last five years. So when you think about five years, this is yielding what, 10, 11, maybe even 12% over the last a little bit more than 12% over the last five years. So again, when you look at the VOO, when you look at the, the long term, and I believe right there was literally the COVID dip when we seen um the bottom drop out, uh, there's July of 19. So that is probably about 20, which is right in here, guys, when we did see it. So March 20th, you can see a little bit down right there due to COVID. But overall, in the last five years, um, you're looking at about a 61% gain, which again is north of 12%, which I don't know any other place that is going to really go above and beyond that 12%. Now they have said the Vanguard S&P 500 that 81%, now let me iterate that guys, 81% of financial advisors cannot beat the returns of the S&P 500, period. A lot of that has to do with the fees that are associated with it. Um, With financial advisors, they usually charge 1%. You'll notice the expense ratio on this one is a 0 0.03 with the dividend yield of 1.49, which means this is super, super cheap guys. When you look year over year over year, of a financial advisor that is charging 1%. You can look at the expense ratio of a 0.03 rate here and really break it down how much cheaper this is going to be. And also you have to remember that 1% is the compounding factor, guys. When you look at one year, okay, it's 1%. When you look at five years, when you look at 10, 20, 30, the 1% you're paying might not seem a lot for a financial advisor to actually offer their services, but overall it does add up a lot, guys. And then let's hop on this company website. So, all right, guys, so here it is with the VOO, the Vanguard. Vanguard S&P 500. Now this is on Vanguard's website, which you can check out for yourself. Want to run through here again, kind of what I'm thinking for the investment strategy and only using one thing, because number one, I don't want to manage this. I just want to be able to put money in there every two weeks, let the VOO or the investment do its thing like it has been doing. But breaking it down, guys, 30 day SEC yield 1.49, which is a B, pretty good right there. The expense ratio on this, of course, very, very low year to day returns. So the performance is 19.21% as of 721, which is yielding just short or shy of a 20% return, which is absolutely incredible, guys. The risk scale, there are a few different things in here that you really want to break down. Do your research before you go ahead and invest into anything. Now, this is where I really want to look at the performance and fees and break it down, guys. So you can see the summary right here at month end, doing pretty good when you look at the year to date, when you look at one year, three year, five year, 10 year. And then of course, since the inception of 2010, so this has been around what? 23 years at this point. But when you look at quarterly, you can really see kind of the snapshot of where it is quarter and where it ended at the year end. You can see even 2013, we're up 32%. And then of course we get into a couple years like 2022, where negative 18. That is why I've said before, guys, this is a long-term play, breaking it out annually. So breaking it down to 2010, when it, the inception was, you can see the total return by NAV, which is right there. And then the cumulative, this is kind of the interesting part, guys is when you look at the VOO, the market price is up 19% for the growth factor. Three year is up 50%, five year, 78%, 10 year, 234 cents inception. So if you bought this in, what is that? September 7, 2010, so held it for 13 years, the market price would have grown 421%. That is absolutely crazy to think 
how much you would have at this point. Let's say you put $10,000 in there, 50,000, whatever it may be, guys, 421% since the inception of the Vanguard S&P 500. Now, even looking here at the expense ratio, the VOO is again the 0 0.03. Expense ratio of similar funds, 0.79. So that is where you are getting not only the really big benefit of the expense ratio being so incredibly low with this fund, is it's not eating up the compounding interest that you're going to be seeing over the long term. Because again, if I'm holding this for the next seven years, I do not intend to draw any money or take any money out of the VOO, out of this investment. I'm going to rely on some of the Roth 401ks that I have, um, some different strategies that we really have if we're looking to retire at that 50 age. So guys, that'll do it for today's video. I really wanted to break this down and show you even looking at the 10 year when you look at the charts, it really shows how much the investment can go and how long you can really go into an investment such as this. It has a really strong blend and that is one of the big reasons guys when it comes to kind of the, the risk mitigation that I look at. When you look at the Vanguard S&P 500, if you're unfamiliar with it, it invests in the 500 largest companies within the United States, which that is where I want to focus. So it is a blend of large cap stocks because it is of course the 500 largest in the nation. And you can see it is a blend of companies because you have every single aspect that is covered within here. Even when you look at the distribution guys, you can see the breakdown of kind of how you look at it through here are the realized gains. So a little bit realized or unrealized gains. You can also see the dividends that they paid, but also you can go through here and you can see everything that they actually own and what percentage they own as you go ahead and you do break this down. So guys, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.